the Masters Tournament is in the hands of Sergio Garcia to win. The golfing hero of Spain on this special date. And after so many years, once and for all for Sergio. Sergio Garcia is your champion. Finally wins his first major in 73 tries here at Augusta National. Yes, Sergio, you deserve it. This is Acura at the Majors, a Golf Talk Canada special, the Masters Recap Show, presented by Acura. Acura, precision crafted performance. Welcome to our Masters Recap Show. Mark Zucchino alongside Bob Weeks. Bob, I'm actually still getting chills and tingles even watching our <laughs> opening sting. It was that dramatic, uh, especially coming down the stretch. Those last two hours of the broadcast were just absolutely incredible. It sort of reminded me of the Open Championship last year. Two guys going head-to-head, -head, battling it out. You knew really by the time they got to Amen Corner that it was going to be one of those two guys who was going to pull the championship out. Once again, Augusta National just delivers such a great story. Yeah, for me, the Masters certainly started when they got to that 13th hole. Boy, was that a turning point. Let's get to it right now on the tee sheet. Let's kick it off with some highlights from the Masters. Sergio Garcia and Justin Rose, Tiger they start Woods. the day tied in the final Jack pair. At Which six under students. par, Sergio Keep trying to battle all those demons. Eight. Of course, Justin Rose already with the major at that the U.S. Right Open back at Marion. And let's pick it up on the eighth hole. Here's Justin Rose for birdie, and it just creeps in the front edge. And, of course, Sergio makes a disappointing par on that hole. And Justin would go and make three birdies in a row. They'd get to ten. Tied for the lead to start the back nine. Sergio comes out of this one. Leaks it right, finds the pine straw. Oh. Awkward lie, awkward angle, pitches it to here, and this is the par putt that would slide by, and all of a sudden, for the first time in, a, in the day, Justin Rose would have the lead, and then the question marks. Will Sergio do what he's done in the past? And it certainly looked that way after this insane angle on 13. He finds the pine straw, misses the hazard, but needs to take an unplayable lie. Takes the penalty shot, lays it up to here, and here's Masters' experience at its best. Uses the sideboard, uses the funnel. When you've played 19 Masters, you know that this is what it's going to do on Sunday, and he crawls it back. And let's now officially call this the TSN turning point. I hinted to it, Bob, but here's the par effort. How Sergio makes par from there was absolutely incredible, but is just as insane as Sergio's par from there is Justin Rose not making birdie from back of the green into it. Just off the back, he walks out with par. What a change from what you were thinking about when you saw these two guys standing on the 13th tee. Absolutely incredible. And here, one of the best eight irons from the center of the fairway. He nuked his drive. This is on 15. He dials it in and almost jars it. He's going to have a chance at an eagle to tie for the lead with only three holes left if he can bury this. Remember, Bob, it's Seve's 60th birthday on Sunday, and the last person to make an eagle in the final round, Jose Maria Olathebel in 94, but Garcia gets it done. Look at that fist pump, a little excitement going on there. And the emotion pouring out of the Spaniard on the left edge as it drops, and the crowd pushing Sergio along. Here now, 16, taking dead aim off another sideboard. We just saw moments ago before this shot was hit, Matt Kuchar Jarrett. I love the where they put position. the pins here. Sunday, they just do it right at Augusta. And Sergio says, that, my friend, could be for the lead. But Justin Rose is not going to back down. This is a major champion. This is a man who's won That's all around the world. And he stuffs it in there and underneath the whole bob, which is key. That is such an easier putt than what Sergio has. Justin would make Sergio to answer, and he legs it down and just waves at it. And now... We're looking at question marks, but the following hole to keep the lead. Justin Rose for par and he misses. So there's a door open for Sergio as they come right. tied to the last hole. 18th hole at Augusta. Rose first, this is a block. Eight Gets out ahead of it with his left side. Heading towards the right edge of the green, it takes a fortuitous hop and funnels all the way down to the hole, giving himself a birdie look and Sergio's gotta be thinking, oh my God, here we go again. But Sergio has one final say here. He's also in the center of the fairway, and he takes dead aim. 
Slides it in there the to five, six time. feet above the hole. Inside rows, they give the thumbs up to one another. Now, rows for Birdie to Rose. take one shot lead. It never breaks. He's shocked, hand on the mouth. And let's take a look back now here. This is the 2000 Open. Sergio with a putt to win the British Open on the last hole. And the golfing gods say, not today, Sergio. You can see the and then, of course, the moment arises. It comes right back. Here we are 10 years later, 2017, 18th green, to win the Masters for Birdie, and it stays out. He, hung it he out. can't believe it. Both those two putts by Rose and Garcia, they hit them where they wanted to, just misreads. Now, Sergio, uh, excuse me, Rose off the blocked drive on 18, just like he blocked his second on the regulation hole. This is in the playoff hole. He gives himself some trouble to get up and down for par. Sergio, after a perfect drive, loved to bend the driver all day left to right, and he stuffs it in there. Another beautiful approach. He just ripped that driver off the tee all Sunday. Justin now, this is a desperate need for par to force Sergio to make, and he does it. Now, Sergio Garcia, Bob, has two putts to win the Masters. Lag it, Sergio. <laughs> and he only needs Man, one. He so does it in style. Years. A birdie to finish, yes. and are you kidding me? Sergio, Sergio Garcia is a Masters champion. That's right, you heard it right. He is a major winner. Look at Angela, his fiance in the background. <laughs> the emotion pouring out, getting the jacket from Danny Willett in Butler's cabin. Absolutely incredible. Let's take a look at the final leaderboard. There it is, Sergio in a playoff. I love the international flair of this leaderboard. Rory, once again, not going to get it done at Augusta. He will keep his name off the Mount Rushmore of golf, but what a colorful leaderboard. Matt Kuchar, Paul Casey, another brilliant performance. Let's hear from our Masters champion in Butler Cabin, Sergio Garcia. Ooh, it's been, it's been such a long time coming, and... Uh... I thought, I thought I had it on 18. Uh, I thought I, I hit the putt exactly where I wanted. Uh, I practiced that putt in the practice round and it breaks left and for some reason it didn't. Uh, but, you know, I knew that I was playing well. I, I felt today, I felt the calmest I've ever felt on a, on a, major, on a major Sunday. And um, even after making a couple of bogeys, I was, I was still very positive. Uh, I still believed that there were a lot of holes that I could that I could get to, and uh, you know I had some really good shots coming in, and I'm I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> when I came here in '99 as an amateur, um, I felt like uh, I felt like this course was was probably going to give me uh, at least one major. Uh, I, I'm not going to lie, that thought kind of changed a little bit through the years because I started feeling uncomfortable in the course, but uh, I kind of. Uh, came in peace with it uh, the, the last uh, three or four years and, and I accepted you know what what Augusta gives and takes and, uh, and I think because of that uh, I'm able to stand here today. Let's take a look at some of the Spaniards and what they've done with 54 hole leads at Augusta that's pretty good three for three Sergio needs the playoff but Ola Fable got it done in 99 with a 54 and of course Seve and again, Seve may be looking down and shining at Sergio Bob on his six, what would have been his 60th birthday. Sergio gets that monkey off his back. I think it was I think it was Seve who pushed that eagle putt, just that last little, little breath that it needed to go into the hole on 15. Low. Unbelievable. Bob, I gotta, you know, when we talk about this win now from Sergio, I think, and this dawned on me the other night, and I haven't spoken to you about this, but we gotta go back now to the US Open last year. Dustin Johnson, uh, you know, he got the monkey off his back. We'll get back to that. Let's let's look at Sergio Garcia first by the numbers here. Incredible. There's the emotion with Angela, like you said. I think life is great for Sergio off the golf course, but if we look at him by the numbers, there's some big ones that pop out here. 19. So He's played 19 years. majors until he was able, sorry, 19 and masters for until he was able to gra Sergio. grab that green jacket. That's a record. Most okay. of anyone before they win. This yeah, and uh, of course, Marco Mira had the record at 15 back in 98 until he got it done. Uh, 22 of the last 27, uh, 27 masters champions have come from the final pair. That's incredible. 22 of the last 27. And of course, there was a streak there from 91 to 2006 where they went 16 years in a row where the winner came out of the final pair and number nine Garcia becomes the ninth player in the field to break par in all four rounds the last player to do it was 
Tiger Woods back in 97. Tom Watson did it in 77 and again in 81. I find that amazing that it's uh, that the winners don't break par all four rounds, but Sergio gets it done. Well done, Sergio. To go back to my thought there before we got into the numbers, Dustin Johnson takes a monkey off his back of the U.S. Open. Henrik Stenson takes a monkey off the back of the British Open last year. To a certain degree, a lesser degree, Jimmy Walker further down the list, but finally gets that hurdle. Now, Sergio, we're four majors in a row, Bob, where guys are finding redemption stories. Is it coincidence in all of this that it's because Tiger Woods is in, no longer relevant in major championship golf? Do you think that has opened the door? What's in the water? What's going on here? I think these guys just are, are now accepting the fact that they're good enough to win majors. The opportunity comes up. You look at Henrik Stenson, the slow greens that we had at Troon last year. That played into his hand. You look at Jimmy Walker, a long golf course like Baltusrol. He's a long hitter. That plays into his hands. You can even go back and look at, at uh, Jason Day winning the PGA Championship before that to get his first major. Mm -hmm. And I think they're taking advantage of what the courses are giving them. And even Sergio admitted that in his, in his uh, post-round interview where he said, you know what, uh, you, you have to accept what Augusta gives and takes. Well, for me, there's two big changes in Sergio. And one of them is for sure the people around him, his family, his friends, his circle now, including Angela's fiance. He was very open, Bob. He said, these people don't tell me what I want to hear. They tell me what I need to hear. And they've helped me change how I feel about things that happen on the golf course, how I can control myself emotionally. And it's allowed him to deal with the things that places like Augusta uh, give to him. The other thing I found different with Sergio is, and I said this earlier in the week in our Masters broadcast, this was a controversial figure, a polarizing figure, a guy who spit in the cup, a guy who blamed the golfing gods, did not take ownership of his mistakes on the golf course. And I used to beat on him for that. But in the last couple of years, he takes ownership of it. And now all of a sudden, he's a fan favorite. Did you not feel the crowd urging Sergio along, picking him up the way they pick oh, up Phil Mickelson. Sure, coming up coming up 18 on the in the regulation, they were chanting his name, Sergio, Sergio. So in that, that of the United States, go back just to the fall of this year when they were just absolutely all over him at the Ryder Cup. They love to beat him up at the Ryder Cup, and he kind of plays back at it. But he sort of said, hey, at least I know uh, from when I finished the Ryder Cup, he said, at least I know I haven't won a major yet because everyone's reminding me about it. But I think Sergio really played well in terms of his ability. And you look at the back nine scoring. From 99 to 2006, he was 45 over par. 47 over par. This week, he was five under par. So that, to me, is the key, is that he played the back nine better than he's ever played it before. Uh, quickly, before we go to break, before we throw, before we throw to shots for the week, Bob, uh, when Mickelson ripped the monkey off his back in 04, opened the floodgates, he's now got five majors and, and could have even had more. Does this potentially open up Sergio the, uh, to, op uh, to win more majors? You know, Sergio said in that interview that he thought Augusta National would give him a major. I always thought that he would be more of an open championship kind of player. Now, there's so much that happens with your, when you're the Masters winner, you go into the U.S. Open, so I'm not sure if he'll get that done there, but I would love to see him at Burkdale. I think he's going to be a good, a good fit for that golf course. I couldn't agree with you more. I always had him penciled in for the Open Championship if it was going to be any, so who knows. All I know is this. He went 0 for 73 in his 74th ch uh, try in a major. He finally got the monkey off his back. On the other side, we're going to talk contenders. The first shots of the week. Headwind now. Over the green, off the tee. Going with look like a hybrid. Putting with his hybrid. Oh, look at this. Wow. Little aggravated proceedings. But you're right, the day drains on you. There's a lot of effort here as Bubba just gets it over the crest. Oh! oh Bubba with another long range bomb. <laughs> Brandon Grice, right on the cut line. We got a low driving wedge shot. Looks good, Bobby. Yes, beautiful shot. Tracking towards the cup. Look out! Oh! Our first eagle here at 15. <laughs> yes, it's in. <laughs> Into that lower swell. You better just get it to the top of the ridge. Wow, this, this could be good. Oh, what touch for the big man here. What touch. Oh, my! Take home some crystal, young fella. Sergio Garcia with an eagle three at 15. Matt Kuchar. 
That is a seven iron. That was a gaze. That was an ace. And after so many years, once and for all for Sergio. Shots of the Week were brought to you by Golf PEI, Canada's number one golf destination. This is Acura at the Majors, a Golf Talk Canada special, the Masters Recap Show, presented by Acura. This segment of GTC is brought to you by the all-new 2017 M by TaylorMade. Better everything. Chance here to personally get rid of the memories of last year. Washed away at 12 again. Through a man's eyes is soul. There's something about this hole and Spieth. And a frustrating day continues for Jordan Spieth. On a scale of 1 to 10, that's an 11. You don't do that. You really don't. That's a big mistake. So it's nerves and touch and mind. He is gaining so much experience. Wow. And he's gaining spots on the leaderboard. I have a feeling we'll see him on the front page of a few Masters leaderboards on Sunday in years to come. Yeah. Justin Rose and Sergio Garcia tied for the lead. Big birdie putt for Rose. We're heading to a 73rd hole. Sergio Garcia is your champion. You can't feel bad. I mean, if, uh, if there's anyone to lose to, it'd be Sergio. He deserves it. Jordan Spieth, the 12th hole. Look at this Achilles heel, Bob. This is unbelievable what he's done the last four years at number 12. Eight over on this one hole in the last round. He thought he was done answering questions about last year. Uh-uh. This is just getting bigger. Uh, we're going to talk contenders. We're going to talk big names. Well, let's hear from Jordan Spieth and Justin Rose. And I was, you know, three or four yards off with some pretty good swings in my first six holes that uh, knocked me to one or two over par instead of one or two under. So um, sometimes that, that's how it is around here. Um, we didn't really lose belief until, uh, you know, obviously the one on 12, you know, fell a little short. But all in all, I, I made some great iron swings today um, right at the flag sticks, and they were just off on the distance. But um, a lot of positives coming out of this week. Um, another good tournament here at the Masters, and fortunately I get to come back for another 50 years. I mean – Disappointed. I mean, it's pretty simple, I suppose. I mean, a lot of good things happened today. It was a wonderful battle with Sergio. You, you can't feel bad. I mean, I, I, if there was anyone to lose to, it would be Sergio. He deserves it as much as anyone out here. You know, he's, he's had his fair share of heartbreak. And, uh, you know, I really felt like I had it under control around the turn, um, playing great golf. Just needed one or two putts to four coming in, really. But, uh, you know, I played well. He obviously rallied and had a great comeback there on 13. It was a great up and down for him. And then uh, he birdied 14, eagled 15. So he was the only guy. As you see, we separated from the field. It was just Sergio's run around uh, that pass save 13, 14, and eagle 15. I mean, that kind of put him back in the tournament. Other than that, I had it won. All right, Bob, I want to talk about notables, and I will say this. I thought Justin Rose handed himself with great class this whole week, and especially during that defeat. Uh, it's so hard to get that mic and that camera put right in your face <laughs> immediately after this crushing defeat. I'm not going to call Justin Rose a loser. I won't call him a winner. I'll say he played well on Sunday. He left some doors open. Obviously, a bogey on 17 is a little sloppy, and you know this could have been his. He has made more birdies and eagles since 2012 than anybody, and he still doesn't have a green jacket. But other than Thomas Peters, he's my winner in the contenders. He's young. He gained experience, he played well. Everyone else, Fowler, Spieth, McElroy, to me they are huge in the quote-unquote loser department in the Chasers. Jordan Spieth maybe being the most obvious, Bob, we should be talking three green jackets in a row right now. Or at, least he, at least he should have been in the conversation on Sunday. You can't come out Sunday at this golf course and shoot 75. It just doesn't, doesn't work for you. And I'm so surprised about Jordan Spieth's round, more than I think anyone out there, because he's played so well on this golf course. But to shoot, to shoot that bad number, 
And I, I don't know. It just he just called he called it bizarre. I think that might be an understatement yes. for, for his round. The, the, his whole uh, last couple of Masters has been bizarre. If you go back to the back nine last year, you go back to the quad earlier in the week on 15. Like uh, we, there's weird things happening to Jordan Spieth and a guy who seemed to have owned this property. He's 26 under on yeah. this golf course. And then all of a sudden these weird things happen. It started on number one. Number one and number two were playing exceptionally easy. And and thank you to Augusta National for setting it up for early fireworks. But people were birdie number one for the first time all week. He drops a shot on number one, and it kind of goes from there. And I think you look at Ricky Fowler now as, as a guy who may may not be able to close. That's that's going to start to be that that uh, tag we're going to yeah. hang on him. In the last nine majors, in the final rounds, he's only broken 70 once. Again, another surprise. Maybe you don't wear uh, that orange when you're at the Augusta in the last <laughs> round either. I don't know about that. But I was equally surprised about his round because I thought he was a little more at calm, a little more at ease. He said he'd never felt as good in a major. Now, are we starting to get close with Rory McIlroy to where we are at the Phil Mickelson level? I know he's still young, but... How many years in a row are we going to get to the point where we start talking about Rory saying, hey, this is your chance to put your name on Mount Rushmore, join this elite group, become only the sixth man in history to win the modern-day Grand Slam. He's had multiple cracks. He was in the hunt again, and every time he has a chance to strike where his name's creeping up that leaderboard, and you and I would look at each other going, okay, here's the move. Never happens. Is it becoming too big an elephant in the room already, Bob, at such a young age? Well, everyone else who has completed that Grand Slam has done it in three or less times, three or less tries. He's now on through his fourth one now. So you're starting to think, yeah, he's, he said, well, I've tried really hard. I've tried not to think about it. He's trying to come up with the right formula, whatever it is. And this week, I thought maybe just the rust, not being able to come back from that injury. So maybe it's a little bit of bad luck in addition to some mediocre play. But I really thought this might be a little bit of a better performance for Rory coming in. Just, assume, just assuming the way he wants this so much. Yeah, just quickly on the way out here, I also want to say I know John Rahm didn't have the Sunday that he wanted, but I thought it was a good first time around Augusta for John Rahm. And how about so. Thomas Peters? I think that's a guy to watch yeah. in the next couple of majors as and well. Again, that's why he was my only winner of the contenders. <laughs> well done. On the other side, we're going to talk DJ. Where did number one in the world go? How did it affect the tournament? And what do we know now? Not much. This is Golf Talk Canada. Closed captioning is brought to you by the Muskoka Bay Club. Live, stay, and play at Muskoka Bay. This is Acura at the Majors, a Golf Talk Canada special, the Masters Recap Show, presented by Acura. This segment of GTC is brought to you by WeatherTech, Canada's leader in automotive accessories. World number one and tournament favorite Dustin Johnson took a tumble down the stairs. He hopes to play tomorrow. I cannot imagine a more dramatic, startling development. I've never seen anything like this. Quite often it gets worse in the next 12 to 24 hours. That injury has, is fairly significant. He benefits from having the last tee time off just after 2 o'clock. There's going to make every intent, every effort for Johnson to play. The major favorite coming into the first major of the year. Questionable to start on Thursday. big question was, would Dustin Johnson even play? Just spoke to DJ and he said, we'll see, we're going to give it a try. He ultimately decided to withdraw from the Masters. World number one missed. Let's take a look at world number ones that have missed majors in the past. The list is fairly short, Bob, and obviously most of those are uh, all injury related. Yeah, some of them kind of freak, like Dustin Johnson. Of course, Rory McIlroy injured his foot playing soccer <laughs> a little bit ahead. Uh, Tiger Woods with the death of his father there at one point as well it was, uh, you know, there's just some some uh, freaky things that happen sometimes, and as you say, sometimes they're all just about injuries. Before we jump into DJ, let's hear from world number one after the withdrawal, Dustin Johnson. I could swing maybe 70% was about max, and you know it still hurt. Um, you know it, it it wasn't the problem. It didn't hurt. The back swing's fine. I could swing, yeah. take it back. It was impact and through impact is where it would catch. And so, you know, I just felt like I, I, I'm not going to be able to compete. This is one of my favorite tournaments of the year. I feel like I'm playing the best golf of my career right now. And, you know, for me to, to, to pull out is, I mean, it, it sucks. Bob, uh, I'm not going to say that I know what DJ should be doing for his body. He has a great team of physicians and coaches, etc., around him, doctors. So they probably made the, the right decision for what they think is best for DJ's health and moving forward. That being said, i got to think that most of the people on the golf course, I know I was, I know a lot of the media was shocked that he didn't give it a go, which leads me to believe that maybe there's more going on here than what we're being told. It's awfully quiet right now. 
You know, I, I'm not sure if that it's what to make of it. That's the one thing that we don't no. really know. But I can tell you, if this was not Augusta National, if this was not the Masters, I'll bet you Dustin Johnson pulled out five minutes after he slipped on those steps. He really wanted to try and give this a go. So I think that may play into it. The other side of it, though, is if he knew he wasn't going to be competitive, if he knew he wasn't going to have a chance to win, it probably was a tough decision to make. But I think you have to pull yourself out. Were you uh, faked out at all? Because I got totally faked. Um, he went to the driving range with his track man. Uh, you know, they're trying to figure out, you know, what's he swinging at? He said, I'm swinging about 70%. It, it was hurting at impact. So they were looking for maybe a reason to kind of stay in it. Made, made the meandering walk over to the putting green and first tee area. When he got over there, I thought, okay, <laughs> yeah. here we go. Like, if he was going to withdraw, he would have pulled off at the range. He would have put hands up, walk away. I can't make full swings. Were you faked out at all? When, you, when he w made the, the, the kind of saunter to the first <laughs> tee area, did you think he was going? For sure. For sure I thought yeah. he was. And I, I, actually, I actually sort of said, okay, he's going to give it a try. And, and we were joking about, you know, his 70% off the tee is probably like most people's 100%. But I think uh, I think it he was it shows you that he was right up to the very last moment before his tea time at 2:03. He was still thinking about playing. I would say this to uh, for all you uh, you know quote unquote haters out there who are suggesting that there's an asterisk. Uh, with Sergio's win because world number one wasn't in it, the heavy favorite. I don't buy that whatsoever. Those first two days at Augusta were so bizarre. They were so difficult. There was people crumbling all over the place. Oh, there sure. is, not, all, with all due respect to Dustin Johnson, who is number one in the world, there's a chance he doesn't make the weekend. Bob, there's also you, you know you don't know what to what to think of it. You know it's it's we don't really know the extent of the injury. He said well he'll be fine in two or three days, but we haven't really heard anything yet. An update on where he is. We don't know when he's going to play next. We don't know if he's hitting balls right now and he is back to normal. It was apparently just a muscle contusion that happened. Uh, there was no breaks or anything more serious than that, but we'll find out when we see him again, I guess. We had three Canadians in the field of the Masters. That was the first time since 1958. We'll talk about the Canadian story next, right here, Golf Talk Canada. This is Acura at the Majors, a Golf Talk Canada special, the Masters recap show, presented by Acura. This segment of GTC is brought to you by Moto Caddy and Stewart Golf Dream Machines, the Canadian market leaders in electric walking golf trolleys. Adam Hadwin, Canadian, in his first Masters. Oh, that one goes in for Adam Hadwin. Welcome to Augusta National. He's got a pretty good year going. Well, this Canadian, Mackenzie Hughes. First time Masters participant, he's done his homework. And then you have to have the skill to pull it off as well. What about what Mike Weir did to a nation north of the border when he won in 03? 29-year-old from Canada, the Masters rookie. He's got a pretty good year going. This was supposed to be the honeymoon this weekend. Yes. That was uh, wisely postponed. Oh, look at this. Wow. You know what, I played really good golf all day. And that's why he has surged right up into the world's top 50. Adam Hadwin's debut. We know how difficult the Masters is on first timers. On first timers, uh, six over par, low round was 70. Uh, birdies, bogeys, uh, par five scoring only three under. I know he's a little frustrated with his week. He captured a little something in the fourth round, but overall, if you make the cut and play four rounds at Augusta and look like you belong in your first time, that's a win. He spoke to Bob Weeks following his final round on Sunday. All right, Adam, a uh, better day today. You were saying you were struggling with your swing going through the first three rounds. How did it feel today? I felt much better. Um, you know, we worked yesterday after the round, uh, maybe found that I might have been setting up a little bit too far left. Um, so we worked on that yesterday, uh, worked on it again this morning, felt much better on the golf course. Uh, and I think the biggest thing is I probably saw a few shots go where I wanted them to go early, uh, which gave me a little bit of confidence and uh, was kind of able to keep that momentum through the round today. Seven birdies on the card. Was that kind of what you were expecting for the first three days before the swing let you down? Well, maybe not the first two and all that win, but at least yesterday. Um, you know, golf course is, is there for the taking. There's a lot of pins uh, where you can feed it in off the slopes today. Um, again, though, there's a lot of pins that if you just miss it on those sides, you've got very difficult putts or up and downs. And uh, I made a bunch of birdies, made a bunch of mistakes, uh, which you know, kind of goes hand in hand with this golf course. Uh, a couple, I would say, uh, course management errors uh, on 13, 14. But, uh, you know, all in all, it's nice to end with an under par round here. 
Bob, much more positive after the fourth round. Uh, after round three, uh, I did his post-round interview. You were with me when I did my post-round interview. You saw, you heard the language. He was frustrated. He used terms like, I'm lost, things of that nature. Um, well, let's talk. Hadwin first, remove Weirzy and Mackenzie Hughes from the, from the conversation for the moment. He played four rounds at Augusta in his first time. We know how difficult first-timers do at Augusta. It's not a great track record. And I said to Adam, after round one and two, that might be the hardest opening 36 holes I've ever seen at the Masters in terms of conditions and setup. This is a win as far as I'm concerned. I know maybe he isn't thinking as, as positive as I am, but for me, it's a big win for Adam. I think it's, I think it's great that you got the first three rounds when he didn't play so well and I got the last that's one. A, that's when that's, he did play that's, that's, that's the veteran card. You got that's the veteran a, card. That's right. But I think you're right. You know, I think he was a little bit surprised at his golf swing. Uh, he came in here playing, as he said, playing really, really great for the last six months or so, and he feels his game suits this golf course very well. He, soon, he, is, he believes his putting style, which is kind of that dead weight putting, is perfect for these greens at Augusta National. So I think that's where the disappointment lay. He did get it finally figured out. But there's a lot to, a lot to take away from this as well. He's, he's moved up in the world rankings. He's solidifying his place onto the international side for the President's Cup. All these things kind of build when you make a cut at a major championship. And I just think that he's got to take the, the four rounds overall, as you said, you're playing four rounds at Augusta National. Take your swing, go to the next tournament, which he's playing at Heritage, and just really believe in what you've done, what you've done and what you've accomplished. And this is a major step up. It certainly is a major step up. But let's take Mike out of the conversation because, you know, Mike's looking for starts. Uh, he's finally healthy again. He hasn't got a chance to play a lot of golf. He's going to play this week on the European Tour. Uh, but uh, let's look more at Mackenzie Hughes because he was another first-timer, and this was his first go-around. A rough start for him. But the one thing I will say that is extremely impressive of Mackenzie Hughes, as well as Adam Howen, I can't believe the positive en energy out of Mackenzie Hughes, the way he handled himself, the way he spoke to the media afterwards, the way he handled such brutally difficult difficult conditions. He took the cup half full approach from the start to the finish and we've been talking about this since his debut on tour how he's just a little different on how he carries himself. It was perfect examples first 36 holes of Phil Mickelson as a PGA Tour member. Bob that has to impress you that positive energy. Yeah, I think I think the one thing we've got to remember about about him is that he is still a PGA Tour rookie. He only started playing the PGA Tour this fall, so there's still a lot of learning going on for Mackenzie Hughes, and that happens no matter whether he's at the Heritage or he's at the RBC Canadian Open or he's uh, playing at Augusta National. I don't think he had his best stuff coming in here this week. He did a lot of prep. He worked pretty hard, but I don't think he carried his best stuff in here. And when you don't have an A game. Boy, you are going to get eaten up by this golf course. You can be off by just the smallest of margins, which he probably was, and you can really feel it. So learning ex experience for Mackenzie Hughes, I think he'll be back. Yeah, and it's easy to carry yourself with class and positive energy when things are going well, but when things are going bad and you do it, it shows real character exactly. in the player and the human being. On the other side, we're going to talk the Hoff and first-timers at the Masters. This is Golf Talk Canada. Closed captioning is brought to you by the Muskoka Bay Club. Live, stay, and play at Muskoka Bay. This is Acura at the Majors, a Golf Talk Canada special, the Masters Recap Show, presented by Acura. This segment of GTC is brought to you by WeatherTech, Canada's leader in automotive accessories. Welcome back to our Masters Recap Special. Augusta gave us so many moments, so much energy, unique birdies, eagles. We saw great stuff. We saw maybe one of the best rounds of the year early in the week. Here's Bob Weeks on a magical week in Augusta. The Masters always teaches us to expect the unexpected. The unusual reigns, and rarely does the narrative follow a straight line. This year, was no exception, and it started before the first tee shot. The weather took golfers and fans off the course and then took the number one player in the world out of the field. As the tournament began, the rain faded, but the wind remained, blowing away trees, sand, hats, and the hopes of two Canadians. While some struggled in the breezes and cool temperatures, Charlie Hoffman sailed along, soaring up the leaderboard with a remarkable round that left others stunned. Holy sht. <laughs> um, that was unbelievable. A day later, the winds continued and kept the players guessing. Shots hit with confidence turned to embarrassment a moment later. With players shaking their heads and cursing their luck, a twisted tangle locked in at the top. Some familiar faces, some new ones. On Saturday, the weather turned and the scoreboard started to sort itself out. While the course still proved it could baffle the best, experience moved to the top 
setting up a plethora of possibilities. Justin, Sergio, Ricky, and Jordan. Sunday at Augusta is always a performance. Drama, tragedy, horror, and comedy, they all play out on golf's grandest stage. There were a dozen stories, each one with a potentially grand final scene. But if there was one story that needed to be finished, one that could be completed, it finally came to an end. After so many close calls, Sergio Garcia at last had his win. It wasn't easy. He started fast, fell in the middle, and then battled back to catch Justin Rose. And then, on his 73rd hole, in his 74th major, El Nino dropped a putt that gave him his major. Once and for all for Sergio. No one has waited longer or tried harder in these events, and slipping on the green jacket must have felt very, very good. Bob, Sergio joined some great company here of uh, players who have won low M at the Masters and then gone on to win green jackets. Of course, Tiger with four, Phil with three, Crenshaw with two, and then Jack with the untouchable six green jackets. Well done, Sergio Garcia. I want to talk a little bit of, uh, just for a moment here about Charlie Hoffman because in the opening round, we may, may have seen the best round of golf that we are going to see all year at the Masters. Charlie Hoffman goes out and shoots 65 in the opening round on a day where conditions were brutal. In fact, he almost beat the scoring average that day by almost 10 shots, just a hair under 10 shots, beating the field. Absolutely incredible. Bob, 65, the course record here at Augusta National was done before they tiger-proof the course, <laughs> okay, well back in the 90s, by Greg Norman and Nick Price on a perfect day, the course record 63 by those two gentlemen. Charlie Hoffman has shoot 65 on the modern day version of Augusta in that weather. How good was that round of golf? It's probably one of the best four or five rounds I've ever seen at, at, at the Masters. I've been to the last 21 Masters and I can't remember somebody lighting it up like that, completing a round under those conditions. Winds gusting up to 50 kilometers an hour. And it's, it's okay if those winds are coming from one direction, like generally they do at the Open Championship. At Augusta National, it doesn't. It swirls around, so you are guessing so many times. I can't tell you the number of times that Charlie Hoffman hit a shot that ended up perfectly below the hole, and he's a great putter. He can just roll those in up the hill. When you get those uphill putts, it's not quite as tough here at Augusta National, and that round it was just magical. Uh, we talked about Thomas Peters and how impressive he was, and you know he's going to watch for him in majors, watch for him in big events. Now we've been talking about that since we've been blue in the face the last three weeks, along with John Rom. Anybody else pop out at you that impressed you as maybe even a first timer or something along those lines? You know, Kevin Chapel is a guy who doesn't get a lot of recognition because he hasn't won a PGA Tour event. He's done everything but, and he's just not really a great putter. This week he really kind of impressed me. He moved up the leaderboard on Sunday, finished well enough that he's going to get an invite back next year. I like uh, Paul Casey's round. I thought he played well. He has played well here what year a surprise. after year. And he's another guy who hasn't won on the PGA Tour since 2014, which is kind of mind-boggling. I just sort of think that he should be winning more. He's only won a handful of events, and it just makes you think, boy, this guy has got something. Maybe he can win at a major. Paul Casey should have won in the playoffs last year. He's due, and he always plays well at Augusta. Couldn't agree more. Winners Weird What coming up next. We have Kuchar throwing hats in the air, but they're not his. And Bubba Watson back at it again. Foot in the mouth disease. This is Golf Talk Canada. This is Acura at the Majors, a Golf Talk Canada special, the Masters Recap Show, presented by Acura. This segment of GTC is brought to you by Moto Caddy and Stewart Golf Dream Machines, the Canadian market leaders in electric walking golf trolleys. Every week in the world of golf, there's the good, the bad, the ugly. We call it three dub. It's winners, winner, what? Bob, I have the T in this Masters edition. My winner this week is Fred Couples. How can it not be? 57 years old, and he contended the entire way. The crowd was cheering him on. A, 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 just an ageless wonder. And the stat that he has more top 10 since 2010 than any other player, I find that remarkable, Bob, considering in 2010 he turned 50. So <laughs> since 50, he is outperforming all the players in the field when it comes to top 10 finishes, including these young dynamic superstars. And of course, this was uh, earlier in the week, the uh, almost the Eagle on 18. Unbelievable. Well done, Freddie. Always a fan favorite. And of course, the champion back in 92. Okay, my weird this week, uh, Matt Kuchar, 
great hole in one on the final day. It was fun to watch. That's not the part of this that is weird. We've seen hole in ones on 16 at Augusta many times in the past. Let's hear his post round comments after a great Sunday and a hole in one. Yeah, it was steady golf for, for three rounds and, and through four rounds. And then to birdie 12, 13, 14 was awfully exciting. I, I thought I'd have a good chance on 15 and ended up bouncing back in the water. And then uh, to, to make it on 16, I'm, I'm still hoping to see the replay. I'm hoping to see that I got that Bridgestone B lined up just right before it trickled in the hole. All right. Uh, I love Matt Kuchar. Okay. <laughs> He's a beauty, and he's a sponsor's dream. I just found that to be the most awkward plug for a sponsor you could possibly have. It felt to me, Bob, like uh, Jerry Seinfeld, uh, comedians in cars getting coffee, where he does the <laughs> shameless plug. Yeah. I know he was playing off Tiger Woods and the chip back from 05 and all that, but come on, you just walked off the final round of the Masters and you go down that road? Like, <laughs> oh, I, thought it was, I thought it was pretty good. If you don't cooch, he is the best at giving guys the needle, but you're right. It was certainly not, uh, not hidden or subtle. No, there's nothing subtle about that. And listen, I'm not the king of subtle so uh, those who live in glass houses <laughs> uh, all right my uh, what this week and he's this guy's been on my radar for the entire year I keep beating on him and I'm going to continue to until I see an attitude change and a, and a kinder nicer guy uh, Bubba Watson after missing the cut uh, which by the way I called Bob I put him number one on the list to stay away from in the Masters pools this week for a two-time champion stay away from Bubba he missed the cut his comments afterwards to the media were this golf is hard I don't know if you've ever played, but writing articles is easy. That was his quote, cringeworthy. Here's his tweet hours later after the PR team got a hold of him. Here's what he sent out on social media as an apology. Hey guys, Bubba Watson here. What I was trying to say is make a joke. It was 30 mile an hour winds, golf is hard. And if Bubba Watson tried to write an article, that would be very hard. And what I was saying to the reporter is, Golf is hard, so if he tried to play golf, it would be very tough. Writing an article is a little easier for him than it is for me. It was a joke. I love all journalists. Obviously, I made a bad joke, um, just like I played bad golf this week. <laughs> Well, I'll give it to Bubba for apologizing. At least he did that. But for me, Bob, it feels like the backstroke. It feels almost like the PR team got a hold of him. The energy is bad. And until he turns the energy around, he's not going to get back in the winner, winner circle. He's not going to start playing good golf again. The proof is in the pudding with Sergio Garcia. If you're positive energy, you change your attitude on and off the golf course, it can turn into green jackets. Bob, tea is yours, sir. Yeah, you know, Bubba, for Bubba, it's never a good idea to pick a fight with uh, guys who buy the ink by the barrels, the old <laughs> saying with the media. So anyway, my winner this week is the golf course, Augusta National. Boy, they do a great job at setting this up for fireworks down the stretch. How many times have we seen great moments and even some tragic moments, too? Look, some of those subtle putts, they're tough to do. But I'll tell you, this week, they, they changed it up just a little bit. 15th hole had a different hole location than this, the traditional Sunday location. So it's just enough to keep the guys off guard a little bit. We did see the eagle, obviously, from Sergio on that hole. But I love the, what they do with that golf course. I love the way they set it up. My weird this week is actually from the hole-in-one. It's not the shot itself that Matt Kuchar made. I think this is a great shot. But watch what he does afterwards when this ball goes in the hole. He starts to celebrate. Now, I don't know if he doesn't want to take his hat off. But look, he reaches in, grabs some guy's hat, and just throws it up. There it is again. Watch. Whoop. Here's your hat. I'm going to throw it up. I'm not <laughs> going to throw mine up. Cooch is one of my all-time favorites. I just love the way Cooch carries himself. I love. He has so much fun on the golf course. And he might not look like it, but he is one of the funniest guys you will ever meet. My what this week is, what is Augusta National going to do next? Now, this year, they created in one year the most unbelievable media center that we have ever seen. It is better than any golf course I've ever seen. It had a full-service restaurant in it. I mean, it looked like any five-star hotel you've ever stayed in. It was just incredible what they've done. And over the years, they've built more and more things. They've actually bought up all sorts of land all around Augusta. They bought up shopping plazas. They bought that up, and they let everybody go and park for free. So I'm going to go back next year. There's going to be something new. I don't know what it is, but it won't surprise me anymore. It's incredible. The <laughs> transformation of that property and what they're able to do in a 12-month period is mine. Boggling. All right, 20 Weeks of TaylorMade has officially kicked off. We're going to give away the commemorative master staff bag next, right here on Golf Talk Canada. Winners Weird and What was brought to you by St. Kitts, the Caribbean's most welcoming golf experience. This is Golf Talk Canada, presented by Acura. This segment of Golf Talk Canada is presented by Adidas Golf, geared for more.
Congratulations to our week one winner, Christian Anderson, Miss Sagantero. He walks away with that commemorative master staff bag. Next week, Bob, we're going to give away an M1 driver Ooh. during week two. Now, remember, the only way you can win is if you participate. There's five ways of winning. Follow us at Golf Talk Canada, at tw uh, at Golf Talk Canada on Twitter as well as Instagram. Download our podcast from iTunes. That's how Christian won this week. And like us on Facebook and join our Facebook group. Let's take a look at uh, that commemorative bag as well as the clubs that Sergio used to win his first major. It's the M2 driver, M1 fairway woods, the P750 tour irons, the milled grind wedges, and the spider tour putter. And of course, Bob, maybe the most important item in the bag, that TP5 golf ball with the number 49 on it. That's the year his mom was born. Congratulations again, Sergio. And don't forget this week, actually today, Show us your stripes kicks off. Uh, send us your photos of you decked out in your Adidas gear or your favorite Adidas apparel or you dressed as your favorite Adidas athlete. Send it to at Golf Talk Canada on Twitter or Instagram with the hashtag show us your stripes for a chance to win a brand new pair of Adidas golf shoes in the end of the year. Of course, a whole wardrobe from Adidas. Bob, in closing, this is insane. I can't believe the amount of names we have taken off the list of best in the world without a major. They've got so many names off this list. They're going to eventually get to you and I. That's how many names have come <laughs> off. Go way down to get off me off that list. <laughs> last six majors, big names off, big big names. Who's the best player in the world, in your opinion, right now without a major? I think it's uh, I think it's Ricky Fowler right now. He's got five top ten finishes, five top five finishes in the last ten years in major championships. If he can figure out how to close, I think he's the guy who can get off that list next. Very hard to argue with that. Also, a players champion and a guy who wins the players is always kind of set up for a big major. Fifth you know? major, it's right? The fifth major. The guy I'll go with, Lee Westwood. He's now 0 for 75 in major starts. 0 for 75 and just a boatload of top 10s, nine top fives, so many chances to win for Lee Westwood. This week on Golf Talk Canada, it's TaylorMade week. Golf Talk Canada radio coast to coast, TaylorMade product special. Next week, right here on Golf Talk Canada television, it's our trip to Carlsbad for our product uh, review and special from the kingdom in special California. Spot. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, first good decision on the golf course, it always starts in the closet. Mark and Bob's clothing and apparel provided by Adidas Golf.